What's up everybody, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here and today I'm going to be doing a review on this Fox 2.5 suspension system for the Ford Ranger. So a few things to kind of lay the baseline for this review. I'm going to be talking about the Fox 2.5 front coilovers and the 2.5 rear shocks, both with external reservoirs. The fronts are actually a true external reservoir and the backs are piggybacks. Now you can buy these separately and just do fronts or just do rears, but most people tend to get it as a kit and I think that makes the most sense for a cohesive review of this system. So that's kind of how I'm going to talk about it is as one unit. Now, with that being said, this is on our 2019 Ford Ranger project truck. This is our Overland build that we did that went to SEMA. So one of the big things you'll notice with this truck, which you probably saw in our Fox 2.0 review, is it's a heavy vehicle. We have a lot of gear in this. There's a tent, there's a rack, there's a bed system, the deck system in there. We've got a roof rack, we've got recovery gear. It's a constantly loaded vehicle, so that does affect the way that the suspension rides, and it generally makes things lean towards the softer end because there's just more weight pushing down on it. So I'll try to keep that in mind through the review and continue to mention how that may or may not affect things, but I wanted to lay that out there right off the bat so that you guys know because a lot of your vehicles may not be set up exactly the same as ours is. So to get into kind of the meat of the review and talk about actual specs and fitment with this system, the way we've got it set up is basically at two inches of lift in the front and no inches of lift in the rear. So all the lift comes from the front and they're adjustable from anywhere between two to three inches and you can definitely go higher, but we left ours at two inches, which is where they came right out of the box. And that was about the same height that we were running with the previous Fox 2.0 system. And it made a lot of sense to keep that because we were gonna be running the same tire size and everything too. And I am a big advocate for sticking to a lower lift with a larger tire and not raising the center of gravity to a point where it gets dangerous in these vehicles. But if you are somebody looking for a bit more lift and you wanna squeeze a little bit more height out of it, you definitely can. The only thing I recommend is not maxing them out at a full three inches because oftentimes with coilovers or leveled struts or any of these lift systems, they don't respond super well to being maxed out because you're putting so much pressure on those springs with the preloads that it just rides terribly and you lose a lot of the performance that you could have had by just backing it off a bit. So if you are looking to go higher, my personal recommendation is probably go to two and a half or two and three quarters and don't push it too much farther than that. Now talking in terms of wheel and tire fitment with this system, obviously depending on the height you're running, you're gonna be able to fit different sizes of tires and wheel offset and everything else factors into that too. But what I will say is for our Ranger at two inches of lift, we're running a 285 70 17 BFG KM3, which is their newest mud terrain. And that's on a Black Rhino Stadium wheel, which is a 17 by eight and a half inch wheel, which I believe is running a zero millimeter offset here. With that being said and getting all the specs out of the way, let's talk about the real meat here, which is how this system performs off-road and what the benefits are that you're gonna see with a 2.5 inch coilover kit. So because it's 2.5, what they're referring to is the 2.5 inch diameter of the actual shock body. So that includes the shock in the coilover and obviously the rear shocks. Now that's gonna allow more fluid in these, so you're gonna get less fade, there's more fluid to move, but you also get a larger piston there and you're getting valving that's specifically designed for the Ranger platform. So this is by no means a universal kit or a universal shock. Fox put the time in to make sure that this was gonna work for the vehicle it was going on. Now, the other benefit is of course these external reservoirs or piggyback resis that you have in the rear. And what that allows is somewhere for the fluid to go. So as your shock's moving, if you don't have a reservoir, that fluid has to stay within the shock body and the piston can only go so far in the terms of this system with those external reservoirs you now have somewhere else for the fluid to go so that piston can push a lot further up and down within the shock body because it can move all the oil into those resis the types of terrain where i think this technology really plays in well is running fast through whoops doing some desert running you know washboards kind of cruising down forest roads, areas where the shocks are gonna be working at a high rate of speed, tires are bouncing, you're running over some pretty rugged, bumpy terrain that would normally create a lot of fade, that's where these really thrive. 
I can say just from the experience here of hitting whoops out in the cinders or even cruising over some of the rockier forest roads that aren't necessarily technical four wheel drive, but certainly rough. These really resist fade well and they handle the weight of this truck well because even though we've got hundreds of extra pounds of equipment, it takes a long time before you feel any sort of ride quality difference or any sort of suffering there. And even when they do start to finally get hot to the point of maybe losing a bit of ride quality, the change is not that dramatic. This is an excellent kit for handling this type of weight. And it's also an excellent kit if you're the type of person that does wanna push your truck at higher speeds and kind of play around in the dirt a little bit more. I think it is worth noting that if you have a Ranger that has less weight on it anyways, you're probably still gonna see better results because with less weight, there's less strain on those shocks and they don't have to work as hard to keep the truck in control. Now, with this Fox system, it definitely leans more on the softer side of things. And I generally think that's what a lot of people are looking for, what they imagine when they look at these higher end suspension systems is a nice floaty ride that's gonna be fast over whoops and feel like the Baja 1000. And the truth is, it's definitely not that. You definitely can't just throw this kit on and run your truck down Baja at 100 miles an hour. It just doesn't work that way, but it is certainly gonna be far better equipped than the stock suspension. And I think you do see a huge difference here between just a regular leveled strut or even those two O coilovers that we had on here previously. As you push the truck faster and faster, these respond well, and because they're soft, they eat up a lot of the smaller bumps, but it doesn't seem to lose control. The vehicle stays very well planted, and even when I was pushing it hard enough to bounce over whoops at 20 miles an hour or even pushing past that and trying to hit the bump stops. The truck definitely maintained control and didn't feel like it was going to run away from me at any point or like I was getting bucked around too hard to even keep track of where I was going. So all of those are certainly big benefits and as I mentioned you we're running a heavy vehicle. The less weight you have the better it's going to perform in those kinds of scenarios. Oftentimes people want to know, hey, how's this going to compare to an Icon or a King? Is it softer, stiffer? Am I going to like the ride? A lot of that comes down to personal preference, but I found that in most cases Fox is on the softer side of the spectrum. So it's no surprise here that these are pretty squishy and comfortable. Usually that runs the risk of being a little less controlled because if the shock is too soft, you get too bouncy and there's body roll and you can't necessarily control or modulate your braking as well if you're bouncing over rocks or the truck's kind of rolling around. So that can be a negative and you certainly do experience that at points with this system, but it manages it well. Now an Icon or a King system usually leans on the stiffer side of things and they tend to be a bit more planted and will handle catching air or you know pushing your truck to the limits a little bit better but that comes at the sacrifice of not quite as soft a ride. The thing to keep in mind with this information though is that a lot of times these higher level systems do have compression adjustments, which is the case here with the Foxes where you can see those little anodized dials on the resis where you can twist for high and low compression and kind of figure out what's gonna be the smoothest ride for the kind of weight you have in the terrain that you run on. So there certainly is some room for change there and it's worth noting that in this truck, I left that as bare bones just how it came out of the box with Fox's base shock tune, so to speak. A lot of folks do wanna know like, oh, how does it change as you adjust those dials? And it's kind of hard to say just because not everybody's truck is the same, but you can generally get a firmer or a softer shock to compensate for more or less weight. I just left them at the base level tune here because I wanted the most fair comparison for the other kits we've ran, as well as for somebody taking this out of the box, putting it on their truck, and then going and hitting some roads or trails or wherever it may be. It's pretty obvious to this point that I have a lot of nice things to say about the Foxes, and even with the 2.0s, there is plenty of good to say about these kits. And it's pretty difficult to find cons, especially when you get to this point of suspension equipment just because everything's pretty nice at this tier. In an effort to be fair, I'm gonna try and find a few cons for you and level out where this kit suffers, but there's not much. The first con that I would say is definitely just the sticker shock that you're gonna get at this level. Right off the bat, just off the top of my head, I can tell you that the front coilovers alone without the rears are already gonna put you a little bit over two grand in most cases. And that's not very budget friendly if you're looking for a cheap way to get your truck lifted. In terms of, is that a good value or not? I do generally feel that you get what you pay for with these systems. And if you pay a lot for a Fox 2.5 kit, you're gonna get a lot of good suspension performance and something that can take abuse and is gonna hold up well over time. But 
it's gonna cost you. If you're somebody who is looking to get a little bit more entry level and doesn't necessarily need the performance of this kit, you'll probably find a lot better deal and a lot better value, even in a Fox 2.0 kit or something a little bit simpler. The other con, if you will, is talking in terms of maybe out of the box preparedness. This one feels like I'm pushing it a bit here, but if you're looking for a kit that you don't have to adjust right out of the box or make any changes to, you can just throw it on and run it. The Fox may not be the perfect choice just because it does lean towards the softer side and it's not gonna be accommodating to people who have a lot of equipment on their vehicles. So if you're somebody that wants something that can handle this weight and they're not gonna, you're not gonna have to touch height adjustments, you're not gonna have to touch compression adjustments, things like that, you may find yourself a little bit happier with a kit that is a bit firmer out of the box or is just adjusted already to be more accommodating for that type of build. So once again, it really does come down to the type of person, but there's not a whole lot of negatives to pull here because it is just a overall high quality system. So shifting subjects here a little bit, I do also wanna to touch on just the installation process of this kit. Very briefly, overall, these foxes were really nice to install. I didn't have to fight with them a whole lot. The coilovers went in well, as well as the rear shocks. And we got all the hardware we need with the system. We got all the instructions that we were supposed to have. There wasn't any issues. Everything was packaged nicely. So a lot of that can be important for buyer experience. And when you pay a lot of money for a system like this, you certainly want to know that you're getting a good product and you're going to receive everything that you were supposed to get. So we had no issues there. Finally, the last thing I wanted to mention here is on-road performance. And this is usually just kind of a last little piece that I tuck into all these suspension reviews because everybody's more concerned about off-road performance and what it's gonna do for their truck on the trail. But obviously, if this is your daily driver that you're putting it on, you wanna know that you're gonna have a good on-road experience going to work or running down the highway or carrying the family around. So with the Foxes being a pretty soft system, it's no surprise that on the street, it rides like a cloud. I would even go as far as to say that this is probably one of the most comfortable 2.5 kits I've ever ran, either on a Ranger or an F-150 or any other vehicle. It's very, very comfortable on the street and it really doesn't feel like you've moved too far into the aftermarket realm with a lifted vehicle when you put this on. Usually a coilover suspension is gonna be stiffer than a stock suspension and you notice it pretty immediately when you start driving, but with this one, it actually feels fairly similar to stock depending on the type of person you are some guys do like a firm ride on the road as well and they want their truck to feel like a truck and like it can you know handle some weight this is doesn't it just doesn't feel like a truck it feels a lot like a like a crown vic kind of a boat it really floats over things and i do like that in terms of road trip ability here you know highway miles tend to just float by day-to-day -day commuting is comfortable in it. And if you're concerned about how your significant other or your kids are gonna feel, they'll probably like the way this rides because it's not very abrasive, so to speak. This all of course comes with that same caveat of if you adjust the ride height and you adjust the compression on the system, that's gonna affect the way it rides on the street too. So you can certainly make this stiffer and you can certainly get a different experience than what I'm having for an on-road ride just by messing with those settings. But overall, I think it's gonna be a pretty plush kit for most people. So overall, just kind of talking about this system in terms of everything I've said previously, I do really like the Fox kit. And I think almost anybody that ran the suspension is gonna be happy with the results that they get as well as the capability. Now, the big decision factor is gonna be the way you use your vehicle. And if you're a guy that's looking for something more entry level, or you're just simply looking to lift your truck a little bit to fit a larger tire, and you know you're gonna be doing a lot more you know, rock crawling, so to speak, or just more technical trail driving that isn't high speed, you may not see as many benefits here. This kit might not be the right fit for you because you'll get just the same performance that you wanted out of something smaller like a Fox 2.0. So definitely keep that in mind and keep the type of driving and the way you use your vehicle in mind when you're considering a system like this because I know a lot of guys that see it, they like the anodized dials, they like the look, they like the idea of running a race shock and they go for it and lay all that money down and then they don't ever really reap the benefits of it or they have buyer's remorse when they find out that they could have gotten something cheaper that would have done the job for the way they drive. With that being said, if you are the type of person that pushes your vehicle hard or you're doing a lot of long stints off-road, you got a lot of weight in there and you're really concerned about shock fade or you want something that'll take those heavier hits when you're pushing out in the desert, this is probably gonna be more in your wheelhouse and I think you're gonna find a lot more utility out of this system. Lastly, if you're the type of person that's very detail oriented and you wanna know every little spec on these shocks and you wanna know about the materials used and everything else, 
a lot of that information is available on our website. There's also plenty available on Fox's website, and we'll try to get some links down in the description that you guys can click. Also, if you're interested in picking up one of these systems for your Ranger, we'll have that information down there as well. So you can go ahead and check that out. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was a helpful review for you, and I'll see you next time.